RG. Since reaching a peak in the early 1990s, the number of violent crimes has been on a downward trend. That is, until 2020, when violent crime went up by about 3%. All across the U.S., there were 25% more murders recorded in 2020 than the previous year. Last month, the Department of Justice acknowledged the staggering, that's a, I'm using their word, staggering rise in violent crime and rolled out an effort targeting gun trafficking. And just yesterday, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo declared that his state is going to lead the nation, quote, once again, just like they did with COVID-19. Really, that's... Uh, frightening, with a comprehensive approach to battling and preventing gun violence. Here's um, uh, just a clip of what he had to say. We know how to deal with an epidemic. What we want to say is we want to do with gun violence what we just did with COVID. That's what we want. We want the same level of attention, the same level of energy. Look what we did with COVID. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't have anything to do with nursing homes. Well, just like New York, other cities are struggling with this. In fact, we're seeing about an 18 percent rise in violent crime and gun violence across the country. Now, this is typical of the left. They want to turn to guns. But have they considered the left's attack on law enforcement that might possibly be what is causing or a major contributing factor to this rise in violent crime. Joining me now to talk about this, former mayor of Cincinnati, and senior fellow now for human rights and constitutional governance here at the Family Research Council, Ken Blackwell. Ken, welcome back to the program. Hey, Tony, good to be with you. All right, first, uh, respond to, uh, to Governor Cuomo and uh, the <laughs> fact that they're going to lead on this uh, epidemic of gun violence just like they did COVID. Well, that's that's a shame. That's that's double speak coming out of uh, the the governor's mouth. Uh, he, in fact, had very little to do with the success story uh, across this country in fighting COVID. Uh, it was the the Trump team that put a, a strategy in place that did that. But look, Tony, uh, this 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 burst of of, of crime in in our major cities. Uh, is, is the result of a playbook that the left is running. Uh, they they want open borders. They are pushing critical race theory that divides, not unites. Uh, they, in fact, have uh, this attack on fossil fuels that's driving energy costs up for low income folks uh, in, in, in all of our cities and, and in our rural communities. Uh, this is uh, the result of a status model. Uh, and in fact, what we will see now from the left is that they'll bring guns, not their defunding of the police strategy. Uh, they will in fact uh, talk about uh, the, the Black Lives Matter, but to them, Black lives don't matter when it comes to the people, the, the small babies that are being killed in the womb. You know, and it, and, and it doesn't matter to them uh, that there are so many of our young people who have been, in fact, uh, uh, just just thrown away as 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 if they're nothing more than a, a disposable Dixie cup. Uh, that's the problem. This is a cultural problem that has been brought about by the the the, the left's efforts to run God and faith out of the public square, reduce religious liberty, uh, and kill innocent life. No question, the devaluing of human life and abortion and the role that that has played uh, when, you know, life becomes disposable. No, no question. Th from a practical standpoint, when you're looking at, you know, there's talking about guns. Uh, this is the problem with guns. Well, let me just give you a few numbers here. Um, in New York City, uh, which has the largest law enforcement uh, department in in the country. They're down about 1,500 officers as retirements jumped to 2,600 last year. That was up from 1,500 the previous year. Um, we see Chicago, they're down 700. Los Angeles, down 600. 
police are leaving. And I've talked to a number of law enforcement officers that, that I've known from back in my time in law enforcement. They're, they're leaving because they don't have the support of administrations. I mean, you see the Chicago Police Union uh, voted, uh, took a vote of no confidence against Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Um, I mean, is this any surprise? Police are backing up. They're leaving. They're not going out on a limb to be uh, aggressive in enforcement because they don't want the, the administration to pull the rug out from under them and throw them under the bus. You're absolutely right, Tony. And look, uh, there are those of us who have been saying now for a long time that every city in the United States is becoming a border city. Uh, when, in fact, you have the Biden administration and the radicals on the left, you know, opening our borders, not only uh, to to uh, illegal immigrants, but to drugs and human trafficking. Uh, as, as a consequence, what we are seeing now is this spike up in, in, in crime in our cities. Uh, and it, it's, it's drug related, it's gang related, uh, and it is related to the fact uh, that these mayors, mostly if not solely Democrat mayors, who have in fact cut and run on those men and women who put their lives on the line every day to serve us, to make our communities safe. And you and I know that when cities are not safe, capital flees their cities, joblessness increases. Now with the compounding problem of rising energy costs, uh, things have gotten under out of control and the Biden administration has no one to blame but themselves. I, I want to go to uh, New York, back to New York, because Cuomo, mm -hmm. I think, provides a perfect example of how it should not be done. Uh, you know, for the last four years, he's basically been dismantling uh, their law enforcement uh, system in New York, pushing through uh, laws that uh, basically put more criminals on the street, letting them out of, uh, of, of prison. I'm talking about violent uh, criminals. Mm -hmm. um, to me, this is a classic, classic move of the left. Create a problem by your stupid policies, then say you have to spend someone else's money to fix the problem. <laughs> uh, ab absolutely. And, and all the while shrinking our economy. Uh, Trump had put us on a path of rapid economic growth, job creation, lifting incomes. These guys in a matter of a half year have torn all of that down. Uh, and you're absolutely right uh, that they, they, they actually uh, create problems and it's, it's just like the, the Mad Hatter and Alice in Wonderland, Tony, when he and his f colleagues were sitting around uh, the table, they had made a mess in front of them. And in, instead of cleaning it up, what did they do? He said, let's just move to a clean spot and make another mess. That's the way the left and that's the way the Biden administration operates. They're the Mad Hatter uh, compounded. I mean, if you went back and you dissected this whole thing, reverse engineered it, you go back to the George Floyd uh, killing, all right, which yeah. we all denounce as, as wrong. Right. And, and there are bad apples in the bunch of some police officers, but they're not all bad. And but you go back to the Obama administration and the Department of Education where they were beginning to teach protesting. I mean, what we saw on the streets of America was a byproduct or a product, actually not a byproduct, a product of America's education system and what's been happening in the classrooms, the critical race theories you pointed to, th these other things about hating America. So it spills over into the streets. Then you have this turn on law enforcement and what does law enforcement do? Look, I'm not gonna risk my life, my retirement and my family's future. If I can cash out and leave, I am. I'm checking out. So then you have this dramatic rise in crime. Let me give you some of the statistics here. In New York, shootings uh, in, in major cities were at 40% last year. We had uh, the 4th of July weekend, um, 51 deaths related to shooting. Uh, nationally, homicides are up 18% year over year. Um, the year 2020 brought the largest single increase ever. Cuomo said that the goal is to focus on the hot spots where the shootings are happening and also develop new job training programs to help communities out of poverty. So here it is, spending more of your money when they fail to, to recognize the root causes of the problems that their policies have created. 
Oh, ab absolutely, Tony. And what we are seeing now is city after city, uh, New York being the kingpin, they are, are in fact becoming killing fields as opposed to fields of dreams. Uh, and that's a shame because America is a land of opportunity. Uh, and, and what we are now watching is, is the left slowly draining uh, opportunity out of our society. And they are looking for a, a, a radical transformation of our constitutional republic, uh, making it one that's run by a, a one party governed uh, federal or central government. Uh, that's the status model. And people might get tired of hearing me say that, but I'm going to say it because I've seen it all over this all over this world. And what we're now witnessing is the adoption of a model that should be shoved to the edge bin of history being played out in our country and, and death and destruction are the results. Uh, Ken Blackwell, uh, there is some hope here. There's some good news. Uh, you have some longevity and you've seen uh, the Mad Hatter at work before making a mess. Uh, but you've also seen those come in behind and clean up the mess. We saw it with uh, Donald Trump. You, Trump, you made reference to how he got the economy going in a very short period of time, strongest economy we had, we had seen um, ever, um, growing, people working, historic record lows of unemployment. So it can happen again. It just has to be the will of the people to stand up and say, you know what, enough of this nonsense. That's Absolutely, Tony. Uh, we have been invested in with human agency. God has invested us with uh, with the power to affect change. And we start at the Family Research Council and across the conservative movement with an understanding that the human condition is not a spectator sport. You cannot sit on the sideline and expect things to happen. This is our Nehemiah cry. Come, let us build together. Let's use our individual and collective human agency to affect change. And we can do that in and through the ballot box. We cannot sit on the sideline. You're absolutely right. Our republic was made for participants, not spectators. Ken Blackwell, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us this afternoon. Good to be with you, Tony.